questions that came in that I primarily uh, replied directly to those persons who were asking. Uh, and I'm just kind of, some of them are follow up to questions that were already answered and some are questions that came in that I've actually answered before, we've discussed before, Dandavat, Southern Siddha Prabhu, Bhakti Sanatha Prabhu. So um, I'm not doing a prolonged session here, just very short answers basically uh, based on those those factors. So one was a devotee who wrote and they were asking about why it is that as expansive as the Gaudiya philosophy is, so much time is spent in sort of manual activity like going out distributing books, uh, other kinds of services and there doesn't appear to be much emphasis on going deep into the uh, philosophy of bhakti. So I, I can't really say that that's fully correct in the sense that um, even if you look at our Goswami Varga, Sri Rupa Goswami Pad, Sri Sanatana Goswami Pad, and all of our Goswami Varga, Mahaprabhu sent them to Vrindavan. And in Vrindavan, they were not simply absorbed in the manifesting of the teachings of Mahaprabhu, uh, our philosophical foundation. But they very actively uh, built temples, wrote books, uh, interacted with Vrijabhasis there uh, in preaching. So it wasn't that it was a one-dimensional phenomenon where people just studied philosophy or wrote philosophy and there were no pragmatic manifestations of service. So in the same way, uh, of course, uh, and this is throughout Bodhi history, uh, and if you look in the teachings of Sriman Mahaprabhu and in the Leela of Mahaprabhu, you'll also find that there was a great amount of practical service that was done. One of the key factors here is that uh, in maturation in bhakti, a person doesn't make a distinction between what is practically being done and what is philosophically being understood and eventually realized. Uh, because the services that are done, whether it is washing dishes, cleaning the temple, serving takaji, distributing books, preaching, is all part of the internal potency of Bhagavan. Because if bhakti is based on rendering service to Bhagavan, which it is, anya abhilasita sunya jnana karmadiya navartam anukuryena krishna anusilanam bhakti uttam. So anusilanam, the word seal, is the datu for the word silanam. And this seal datu means endeavors. Those endeavors are body, mind, and moods. So it is not just um, sort of an internal phenomenon. It is, it is a complete phenomenon where everything is engaged. So in maturation, as I was saying, a mature devotee doesn't see a distinction in those things because they're being offered to Bhagavan and one realizes Atahashi Krishna Navani Nabavad Grahamindriya that with our external senses we can't actually uh, have connection with Bhagavan. Grahamindriya means material senses. They cannot actually serve Bhagavan. So it means if you're washing dishes, cleaning a bathroom, whatever you're doing has to be a transcendental empowerment in the senses for that to become a seva in bhakti. So try to understand this deeply. It becomes seva by the infusing of bhakti, not by the external activity. So that infusion of bhakti is according to the maturation of both the internal mood and the attitude of seva. In other words, the desire. It's called Krishna Seva Vasan, the desire to serve Krishna. 
So that desire, coupled with the maturation and the ability to do so, will give an understanding of the sort of connectivity of the activities of the body, the mind, and also internal mood. So in maturation, there's not a difference between external, quote, external activities and internal activities. They're all on the plane of devotional service. Where, on the other hand, there becomes um, a institutional manipulation of activity in order to maintain the institution, that's another discussion, and I don't want to go into that in particular here. I think it'll prolong my short answers. But, you know, sometimes it's seen that to maintain an institution, you have to get people involved in fundraising and so many different things, and uh, in many other factors, and sometimes that mood of how it is savor to our worshipable objective becomes lost. And the dominant factor becomes the external results. Uh, how much money you collected, how much money you donated, uh, how much you're able to facilitate so many services around the temple and your status is associated with that. So we don't want to make service like that. We want to keep the internal connection with the manifest activities. You understand? Uh, next thing. I have mentioned, was the question, <laughs> that I have mentioned that Guru is not really the person, it's a function. Isn't that making Guru impersonal? So let me make some clarifications. In our common parlance, means in our common discussion, we use words like, this is my Gurudev, this is my disciple. So in common parlance, sometimes the true internal reality of that becomes uh, obfuscated. So what I'm saying here is the actual idea of guru is the function of removing ignorance. Gu shabdat andakarasha, ru shabdat andakarasha nirodita. This is the definition of guru. The person who performs that function is sadhu. Jiva Goswami is also described what is a sadhu. Sadnoti sadayati cha krishna prema iti sadhu. That person who is understood and acts on the principle that the sadvastu, the eternal reality, is krishna prema. That person is called sadhu. So that person who has that understanding and who imbued with karun shakti means the internal mercy potency, extends their idea of service to Bhagavan in the form of giving divya jnana and removing ignorance, that function is called guru. You understand? If it's the person who's guru, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur would not have rejected that idea. He told, Thai sisha tava taktiya sarvada, guru abhiman tyaji. So the word Abhiman means the conception that I am Guru. Guru Abhiman means the conception I am Guru. Why would Bhakti Vinod Thakur reject that idea? Because he's saying the Abhiman I am Guru is detrimental to Bhakti. You understand? Because the essential identity in Bhakti is Daso Smi. And in maturation, Daso Smi means I am the servant of Bhagavan. And in maturation, the specificity of that service manifests as a particular kind of relation with Krishna. And the sadhu who performs the function of guru remains absorbed in that internal identity. I am the das of Krishna as paliyadasi, as sakka, as vatsalya, etc. That's their actual identity. And the idea I am a guru, you understand, is an abhiman just like I am black, white, uh, um, uh, born in this country, uh, this kind of profession, etc. These are abhiman, or self-conceptions, that are imposed from the external energy. So we don't want to transfer into the internal reality the imposition of more abhiman. I am a great kirtaniya. I am a great speaker of harikata. I am a great servant of the takaji. I am a great uh, guru. <laughs> you understand? It will become another abhiman in which the obfuscation of the actual identity 
of the Atmas obfuscated. Therefore, Bhakti Vinod Thakur and so many others have rejected this idea. You can see in the reluctance even of Loknath Goswami to accept Narakam Das Thakur. And Narakam Das Thakur was glorified by Mahaprabhu at Kanai Natsal when he was going to Vrindavan. Oh Narakam, oh Narakam. And in the Premavati River, Padmavati River, he deposited praying for Narakam Das Thakur. But Loknath Goswami still had hesitancy. I will take him as a disciple. And you also see how many disciples Rupa Goswami Pad had? Only Jeep Goswami Pad. You understand? And similarly, Loknath Goswami, we don't know of any other disciple except Narakam Das Thakur. On the other hand, Narakam Das Thakur had many, many disciples. But he only saw this is a seva to Guru Parampara. There is no Guru Abhiman. So I'm speaking in that context that Guru is the function of giving Divya Gyan and removing ignorance. Jiva Goswami Pad is written this in, in the context of giving Diksha. Divya Gyan Hyantar Simanti Mantre, Bhagavat Sarup Gyanam Tena, Bhagavat Sambandha Vistesh. You understand? The Guru at the time of Diksha, he removed Shiate Papanasanam, the tendencies for sin and the tendencies for anarthas, right, which obfuscate Bhakti. And he does that by giving Dibya Gyan. That Dibya Gyan is called Visesh Sambandha Gyan. It means specific knowledge or orientation of your Atma towards the service of Bhagavan in a particular way. According to the maturation of the aspirant, at that time, they can digest the degree of that Sambandha Gyan. But not only one time people have taken Diksha. That's why uh, Nartam Das Thakur spoke. Chakudan Diloye, Janami Janami Prabhu say, My Guru Maharaj has come for me life after life. You understand? Because the process of diksha is an unfoldment, it is not one time experience. I took diksha on such and such a date at such and such a festival, and that was it. Diksha is the process of the unfoldment of the Atma. So it's happened previously also. Praktanaka Adunki Chasti Yasad Bhakti Vasan. In our bhakti vasa means the, the impressions of bhakti have come also from previous lives. Praktan means previous lives, and adunit means current life. So the impressions in the atma have come from both, inclusive of having received diksha in previous lives. Well, Mukunda, does that mean I don't need to take diksha in this life? No, because our influence of material energy is so strong from one lifetime to another the overwhelming nature of the material energy mm, mm, gives forgetfulness of the previous life. And that's really a feature of mercy, because if you had to experience everything from your previous life, you'd also have to experience the material phenomenon. And it may not be pleasant. So diksha remains as an impression, but that impression is re-stimulated when diksha is taken again in any given life. And once you consider, as Narakam Das Thakur said, my own Guru Maharaj, has manifested again and again to reinvigorate and stimulate this diksha process which in some particular life had taken place in the sojourn of the jiva. So in this life, when they give diksha, they're giving dibya gyan in the form of sambandha gyan. What is your relation to Krishna? In giving harinam, then the hmm, Bhakti Vinodak was explained, Krishna shaitumar, Krishna dittiparo. Tomara Sokatiyate. Oh, Vaishnav Thakur. This is interesting too, because he says Vaishnav Thakur, not Guru. He says Vaishnav Thakur. You have Krishna. It means that person who's realized Krishna. They've realized Krishna. They have the power to then, in the form of the Nam Rup, to give Krishna in the heart of a disciple. Once they give Krishna in the heart of the disciple, the disciple's objective of worship is now both external in the form of the deity, Radha Govinda, Radha Valabju, <laughs> so many different names of Takadis, Radha Madan Mohan, whatever the deities of your heart are. But now also at the time of Diksha, Gurudev will give relation with Sri Radha and Krishna and Mahaprabhu. You understand? He'll give relation. So at that time, when you're doing your bhajan sadhan means your practice, as it becomes mature, the seed of that divya gyan, that transcendental knowledge, will start to unfold. 
just like a flower when it begins to bloom. And the inner reality of your identity, your association with Radha and Krishna in a particular way, all of that begins to unfold in maturity. You understand? You cannot impose on that process. In other words, you cannot use what's called kalpana or imagination. Oh, so I'm thinking I'm like this. You understand? It, it, will, it will not work. Actually, it will create a further obfuscation in the form of what's called sahajavad, prakritya sahajavad. Because I'm trying to impose a narrative on the process. The process is fully competent to give that realization. By chanting Hari Nam, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself wrote, Nam Nam Akari Bauda Nija Sarva Shakti. All the power to reveal everything is in Nam. So you'll chant Nam without aparad and sincerely, with an understanding of the Sambandha Gyan given at the time of Diksha. If that Sambandha Gyan is unclear, then one should approach Guru or any Vaishnav who has some status like Guru and you have faith and let them give illumination to your Sambandha Gyan. You understand? But technically at the time of Diksha, Guru Dev will give mantra and they'll also give mantra dhyan, means the meditation of the mantra. In that meditation of the mantra, they'll give some revelation regarding your own identity and the identity of Guru. This is not like what is called Siddha Pranali. Understand? In function it is Siddha Pranali. <laughs> but it is not the common understanding of what this Siddha Pranali. Siddha Pranali means that there are 11 elements which are the composition of a spiritual identity. Nam, Ru, Vesh, Vyas, um, and Sambanda, uh, hmm, Sambanda, hmm, Agyai, Agyai, hmm, Seva, Parakashta, Paliyadaksibhav, and Nivasaka. So there are 11 different elements that compose the actual reality, like the name, form, age, your dress, hmm, um, the particular sambanda with brijabhasis, everything. And then the order, the special order that's given to you, etc. So in this way, there are 11 different elements. Sometimes it is the process in some of the lines coming from Mahaprabhu that at the time of Diksha, those 11 elements are given to a sisha. Here the difficulty is that at the time of the prominency of this practice, People, when they came to do bhajan, completely renounced everything and came to do bhajan, sudden. So there was already a degree of maturation there. But in contemporary society, where there's still so much unfolding from anarthas and uh, unwanted things, to go and get an oral idea in the mind, I am this particular associate of Krishna based on hearing Ekadas Bhav. That will simply be transferred into another Abhiman. I am so-and-so in the secular world. I have the initiated name of so-and-so. This is my wife, my house, my car, my job, and my swarup. You understand? It will simply get filed in the various kinds of self-conceptions we have. So only, Jiva Goswami Pad is mentioned, Antakaran Sud. When the antakara means the subtle body, the chitta is somewhat pure, then the impression of the ektas bhav, either heard from Sri Guru or manifested from the combination of Hari Kita, Guru Kripa, and Hari Nam, right, will become substantive. Other than that, it'll just be another accomplishment. Like you've gained so many accomplishments in the material world, in a spiritual sense. I have a name, I have initiation, and I have Ekadas Bhav. You understand? So we want to be careful not to mm, either misunderstand the process of Siddha Pranali, which is a bona fide thing. Don't conflate that with immature acceptance of Siddha Pranali or giving of Siddha Pranali. You understand? And so there's two different things. So point being here, that in maturation, naturally these things will unfold, but the disciple should understand that at the time of Diksha, then Guru is giving Sambandha Gyan. You have to, in your Bhajan Sadhan, in your practice, you have to be attentive to the awakening of that Sambandha Gyan. And the only way to do that is to have first Artam, 
I've mentioned this many times. Artha means what I'm doing, what does it mean? <laughs> I cannot go to the Mangalarti, sing eight verses of Guru Ashtakam and one foul Stupi verse, and then not know what they mean. Because if I don't know what they mean, then the practice becomes ritualistic, and that is called Niyamagraha. Rupa Swami warned against this. Niyamagraha. Niyamagraha or Niyamagraha. Either not following rules and regulations or following them ritualistically. Understand? So I need Artham. What does this mean? And I will hear that in the Harikata for many high class of Sadhu. What is the meaning Guru Ashtakam? Then I can contemplate those meanings. When I'm contemplating those meanings, organically dhyan, absorption, meditation arises in the chitta. You understand? Then the beauty arises in the chitta as well. Chitta means the consciousness. It arises also. And tasting that beauty, one becomes attracted to it and goes deeper. And the reciprocal energy from the spiritual energy, Swarup Shakti, then unfolds the seed of your diksha and begins to make it blossom. That's why Mahaprabhu told to Sanatan Goswami, first is quoted, Brahmana Brahmati Kona Bhagavan Jeev, Guru Krishna Prasade Poi, Bhakti Lata Bij. So once you get the beej of bhakti, right? I've explained this before, so I'm not going into detail here. But then Mahaprabhu told, Mali Kanase Bij Aropan, Shravan Kirtane Jale, Koriye Shekan. That you should take that seed, plant it, and water it with Shravan and Kirtan. You understand? Chanting and hearing Harinam and Harikata from high class of Vaishnav waters that seed. That causes the seed to grow. Mahaprabhu goes on to give an elaborate description of the blossoming of that seed, how the creeper grows, how it has to be protected from upasakas, means weeds, unwanted things, unwanted association, unwanted ideas, unwanted habits, and then especially to be protected from the mad elephant of Vaishnav Aparad. And then that plant will grow and eventually reach the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. Understand? So, it's extremely important that we understand what is the function of Guru. And for anybody who is doing a seva in Parampara of giving Harinam or Diksha, they will also tell you if they are very mature uh, that I don't want Guru Abhiman. You understand? The relationship between any aspirant and any mentor is really one of love. Because Guru is giving their whole heart, disciples giving their whole heart. This is called the Shramdena Guru Seva. Rupa Goswami, when he wrote the 64 Angas of Bhakti, he mentioned Guru Padasraya, Tata Diksha Shikshadi, hmm? Sadhu Vatmanu Vat, no, excuse me, Guru Padasraya, Tata Diksha Shikshadi, Vishramdena Guru Seva. Then sadhu vatmana vatmanam. Understand? That vishrambena guru seva means the intimacy of heart between the sisha and the person performing the function of guru. You understand? So it is not really just a romanticized, idealistic idea of, among other things that I have in my life, I have a guru. You understand? So it's a heart to heart connection. In that heart to heart connection, the internal potency, Swarup Shakti, can flow. I've mentioned before, this is expressed in one verse in Bhagavatam, Satam Prasanga Mamavirya Samvido. The word Samvad means the Harikatha given by a sadhu, Satam. When the hero or the aspirant is surrendered, Saranagat. You understand? Saranagat means those six things, doing what is favorable for Krishna, rejecting what's unfavorable, Considering Krishna my protector and maintainer, having humility and giving one's complete self, these are the six elements of saranagati. When a person is saranagat like that, and they're giving their whole heart to sadhu guru, at that time when satam prasanga takes place, the word prasanga means pra rupain. In Sanskrit, this prefix means complete. Sanga means samyak rupain anugamana. It means the complete ability for the aspirant and the mentor to exchange mama virya. The word mama virya here means mm, Krishna's shakti, his power. It flows through sadhu into the aspirant. You understand? The sadhu is via medium. 
Paramatma Tantra Bhagavad Bhakta, that the people Mangu Rai, it's mentioned that the mm, internal energy, Bhakti Shakti, empowers the Bhagavad Bhakta in order to be a dispensing mechanism for Swarup Shakti. That Swarup Shakti is the power that both removes ignorance and gives enlightenment into spiritual reality. So that was a little longer than I would have liked, but this is the actual meaning of Guru. Guru Shabdar Andhakarasha, Guru Shabdar Andhakarasha Nirodita. This is the actual meaning. You understand? The idea I am Guru is an Abhiman, and I've already explained, Bhakti Nauta you know, Kaur told Guru Abhiman Atyaji that this Guru Abhiman should go very far away. You understand? And any sadhu who's performing that function, uh, it is mentioned, Gyanat Tua Gyanat Dobhavet. In 11th Canto Srimad Bhagavatam, Anadi Avidya Yuktasha Purusha Shaviratmanam Swato Na Sambhavanti Because the jiva can't extricate themselves from Maya. Anya requires another. Gyanat Tua Gyanat Dobhavet. So Gyanatva means they are empowered in realization by Bhakti Shakti. And Gyanatva means the capacity for Karun Shakti, of the Bhakti Shakti to shine through, that makes them amenable to sharing that influence with any aspirant. Understand? So this was my meaning by Guru is the function, not the person. You understand? The Sadhu is the person who's performing the function of Gurutva. Understand? Having the quality of Gurutva, meaning dispensing ignorance and giving transcendental knowledge. Uh, next question. I went really long on that, so I may have to cut short because I do have some other services to do. Uh, I have to look on the phone for the other question. Um, the other question was about the discussion on Sri Shukdev Goswamiji. That I told my Guru Padma, many other high class of Vaishnavas, Throughout history, not only contemporary, have spoken that Sri Shukdev Goswami is the Lila Shuk of Srimati Radharani. It is directly mentioned in Gopal Champu, there's reference in Ananda Vrindavan Champu of Kavi Kalapur. And of course, the Mool Praman for this is in Srimad Bhagavatam. I've reached out to very stalwart devotees also uh, to get some reply, and I did get some help with that. And then, miraculously, I found the whole class on Shukdev Goswami. So it just was reaffirming that mm, what things I had gleaned from Guru Sadhu Sastra were correct. So, because I have high regard for this particular Sadhu. I don't like to mention names only because um, I don't like to, I don't have permission per se. Uh, that Sadhu may not want their name mentioned. I don't know. This is the point. But anyway, the Mool Praman for this, which I understood originally, was that in Srimad Bhagavatam it is mentioned. Sri Sukhuvacha. And Srimad Bhagavatam is the Mool Praman, spotless Praman for all the teachings of Mahaprabhu. Our entire Goswami Varga based all their writings on Srimad Bhagavatam. Whether it is the first grunt of Goswami, Sanatana Goswami Pad, Vyad Bhagavatam Rita, all Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, all Ujjal Nilamani, everything based in the Praman, all writings of our Goswami Varga on Srimad Bhagavatam. Of course, Srila Jiva Goswami's Satsandabas, which are the philosophical uh, wall of Siddhant, protecting the teachings of our Goswamis and Mahaprabhu, only based on Srimad Bhagavatam, is Mool Praman. You understand? Everything in Satsandabas, based on Srimad Bhagavatam. You understand? So, mm, uh, there, Sri Shukhuvacha, directly telling that Shukdev Goswami is the Sukh of Sri. Sanatana Goswami Pad is commented on the first verse of Rasa Lila. Hmm? Sri Bhadraini Uvacha. Right? Hmm. What is this? Bhagavati is Bhagavat. Apitara Tri Sarad Kalika Malika. Iksham Nantu Manasacha Kre. Hmm. Maya Yam or Yoga Maya Upasritam. Understand? This is the first verse of Ras Panchadhyay. And here he's mentioning Sri Bhadraini Uvacha. So Bhattarayani means the son of Bhattarayan, means Vyasadev. But he mentions here, Sri Bhattarayani Vacha or Sri Sukhu Vacha means Sri Yukta Sukha or Sri Yukta Bhattarayani. Sri Yukta, who's connected to Sri? He's speaking Srimad Bhagavatam. So mm, I mentioned that this is not really such a huge issue, but it has come to light 
in that some people want praman. Where is it written that Radha and Krishna asked Shukdev Goswami to remain in this world to give Srimad Bhagavatam? So there was one verse that I did not quote in the presentation because it was beginning, becoming somewhat long. And that's how to understand one verse which is written in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, Vrindavan niyam rasakeli vartam kalena lupta nita sakti lupta sanchadya dhupe vyatano punasa prabhu vido prageva loka shishti. So here he's saying Mahaprabhu giving power to Sri Rupa Goswami Pad that all of the places of Vrindavan, all of the Leela Sands of Vrindavan, and the moods inherent in those places have been lost. So I'm giving you power, Nija Sakti Ukta, that you can revive these holy places and you can write all about the different moods, which are the mm, intrinsic quality of all of these holy places. Because in the course of time, Kalena Lup, they've become lost. Lup means lost. In the course of time, they become lost. So I'm empowering you in order to reestablish Vrindavaninam and the Rasakeli Varatam. All of the teachings of Raskeli. What are all the teachings of the mm, Ras of Braj? You can write these things. Especially, you can write what is the nature of Adi Ras. Like in Srimad Bhagavatam, Janmadya Shayata means Janma Adi Rasa, means Sringar Rasa. So, Aruko Swami Pad wrote Bhakti Rasamita Sindhu up to the basic description of Sringara, then wrote Ho Ujalinamani explaining the depth of what is Sringara Rasa. So, one question comes, first before I make the other point, that Sri Rupko Swami Pad is Sri Rup Manjari. So, what empowerment did Mahaprabhu give to him? If he's Rup Manjari, he is completely acquainted, Tarapnik, with the heart of Radhika. What would he need? to understand all these things. So two things are here. One is that the Shakti that was given to Rupa Goswami Pad, especially is called Darya Dharan Shakti. So Darya Dharan Shakti means the power to hold his patience, to hold his patience while he was able to reveal. Yan Kali Rupa Charira Nadarata Tan Raja Prema Maha Nidhi Kutarika The vast amount of Prem Ras which was contained in the appearance of Mahaprabhu, which he wanted to make available to the world. That was hidden in a deep chest. So he gave Rupa Goswami the power to open that chest and reveal all of the sweetness of this Prem Ras in a way that the masses of people hmm, could come in contact with the sadhu. You understand? And come in contact with true Vaishnav sadhu, they can get the blessings to have experience of this. You understand? But if that chest had remained closed, if Rupa Goswami had not opened that chest, how would we know about the glory of Radhika's Mahabal? How would we know about the different divisions of Rasa Siddhan? So, now, the other point being, he empowered Rupa Goswami, Darya Dharan Shakti, to hold his patience while he described all of these things. In this verse, it also says, hmm? Sanchaya Rupe, Vyatino Punasa, Prabhu Vido. So Prabhu means, Mahaprabhu himself means Bhagavan. Previously, Prag Eva Loka Previously, in the creation, he also empowered Prabhu Vido. He also empowered Lord Brahma with Rasa Brahman and the ability to carry out his favor of the Shristi Lila. The secondary part of Shristi Lila is Brahma's creation. Atra, Visagas, Cha, Stana, Poshnutaya, etc. If you read the ten categories of Bhagavatam, one is the subsequent creation. The main creation, subsequent creation is done by Brahma. So Brahma received power to do that. But here, in Bhagavatam itself, is mentioning Tane, Brahma, Rita, Adhikavaye. So here, Tane means like to expand, Tanoti. He expanded in the heart of Adikavi, Rasa Brahman. The word Brahma here doesn't mean Brahma. It means Brahman, means Rasa Brahman. The nature of the teachings of mm, what is Braj Prem, everything. 
He imparted it with Daya in the heart of Adi Kavi. If you read the Tikka of Srila Vishnu Chakravati Thakur Pad, he mentioned Adi Kavi here not only refers to Brahma, it also even refers to Bhart Muni, the author of Natya Sastra. It also refers to Brahma, obviously, but it also refers to Shukdev Goswami. So here it's saying that previously I also empowered Shukadev Goswami to do Vrindavaniyam Rasakeli Vartam after Radha Krishna left this world to make sure that the teachings regarding Radha Krishna, their Leela, their Dham, everything would remain. He also empowered Adi Kavi, meaning Shukdev Goswami. So here is your Praman. But I brought up the other point because. Though they empowered Shukadev Goswami, it is mentioned, Radha Nama Prachane Na Muchita San Masiko Bhavet. They didn't give Dari a Dharan Shakti. <laughs> Therefore, Shukadev Goswami, when he was writing, he had to be very cautious that I will not directly mention the name of Radhika. Because Sanatan Goswami Pad is written in Vriyad Bhagavatam Rita. In the first canto, seventh chapter, I think verses 156, 157, 158, he's written that he was Krishna Rasavishta, completely absorbed in Krishna Ras. But even though he could mention the name of Krishna, Rukmini, even the name of other gopis, he could not mention the name of one gopi because he would become so disturbed. So here we have all the evidences regarding the position of Sri Shukdev Goswami. Understand? So, I did not quote this verse in there because it was going very long and I felt there was sufficient Raman. And again, I'm only operating in the mode of seva to what has already been established by our Guru Vargas. You understand? And I, I don't have any, um, what should I say? This is not a, an argument. <laughs> You understand? These are devotees who are in a healthy way trying to understand in presenting the idea that Shukdev Goswami is the Lila Sukha of Radhika. Where is Praman for this? Because if they're speaking it in Harikata, obviously they want to have some surety that this is, it can be backed up by Sastra Praman. Also, there were others who took a more um, opposite view of this idea, saying, no, it's not written in Sastra. And quoting from other sadhus that the position of Shukadeva Goswami was such and such. But if you really look at the at what was written, it's more anecdotal because it's based on conversations or a darshan more than an actual ongoing um, conversation by either person. One person's quote is Bhakti Sarant Sarasati Thakur speaking to one pundit from Assam. The other is Al Puja Bhakti Bhakti Rakshak Shri Goswami Maharaj in a darshan setting. So we don't have an ongoing ability to see the fullness of the perspective that either Bhakti Sinan Saraswati Thakur or Srila Siddha Maharaj had in speaking about Shukdev Goswami because you're talking about two snapshots in time. You understand? So we don't do that. Just like if you take a snapshot in time, our Srila Prabhupada mentioned, we are all originally Krishna conscious beings. You understand? But Two things here. One is, if you take only the English parlance, we are all originally Krishna conscious, and you also take that particular time period of Srila Prabhupada, whom he's speaking to, at what level of bhakti everyone is at, and you make a Siddhantic idea, Srila Prabhupada said we were all originally Krishna conscious, therefore we must have fallen from the spiritual world. You understand what I'm saying? So we cannot take anecdotal evidence or snapshot evidence and extend that into the idea of Siddhant. You understand? Because obviously we have Srila Prabhupada on other occasions clearly saying that in reference to Jai Vijaya, it should be concluded unless there's something to be done on behalf of the Lord, no one falls from Vaikuntha. So you have to reconcile, and the way to do that is the vetting process of Guru Sadhu Sastra, and you'll see all of our Guru Vargas have mentioned the same thing. It is not possible for a relationship with Krishna to be broken and one to fall from the Nitya Dham into the material world. Okay? Also, the verse that I quoted earlier gives the definition of how the Jivas are in the world. But I don't want to go down that path. That wasn't what this was supposed to be about. So I think uh, 
Um, and fortunate or unfortunate, um, I ended up spending more time than I really had allowed. Uh, this was supposed to be short Q&A based on certain questions. So obviously I was unable to get to some of the things that were written in, but I, I did hopefully give some depth of explanation to the things that were written in and maybe uh, above and beyond, so to speak, by the mercy of my Guru Pada Padma and our Guru Vargas. So again, devotees, thank you very much. I'm always appealing for the blessing of the Vaishnava Vaishnavis um, that you'll give me your kripa to go on in the service of my Guru Pada Padma. Jai Vancha Kalpa Turvisha, Kripa Shindhuve Vacha, Patita Nam Pavanibyo, Vaishnavibyo Namon Maha, Jai Radhe Radhe.